Windows 10 on ARM is still a thing. In fact, today we're going to take a look at the new Yoga C630 from Lenovo. It runs a Snapdragon 850, and here's the best part. It's only $800, which for some of you may still be too expensive, but it's one of my favorite devices so far this year. Today, I'm going to tell you why. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're gonna be doing a lot of stuff on Windows 10 and ARM, as well as regular Windows 10 PC stuff, Surface, Xbox, and more. Don't forget, you can always leave me a comment, tell me what you guys want me to cover as well. Now, the Yoga C630 here is one of the more interesting devices. Like I said, it's $799. You can pick it up at Best Buy right now. And it's one of the first Snapdragon devices I'm running that has eight gigs of RAM in it, which is actually a really nice change from all the previous versions we've seen so far. It's running a Snapdragon 850 as well, so it's actually a very good performer around a Core i3. We'll be talking a little bit more about benchmarks a bit later. One of the neat things about this laptop is it's one of the first that's a true laptop slash convertible that turns into a tablet. Sure, we had the Asus Nova Go. I never even tried to review that device because it's not one of my favorites out there, but this is actually a really, really good device and that price point just brings it all together. And it's more about the comparisons of what's available on the market there. But let's get into the pros and cons of this device as well. But first, let's give a product tour. All right, taking a look at the outside, it's a very clean looking device, uh, aluminum design and chassis, no flex whatsoever, really solid. Get the Yoga label up there, which is pretty familiar. Coming around to the back, you can see those hinges. So this is a tablet device as well. So this does fully rotate. Uh, this is the new style hinge that they're using, no more with the watch band hinge, which is kind of unique. And it's nice and rounded. I like the layered look too. I think it's actually a pretty handsome looking device. They do make this as a Chromebook as well, but why you get that, I have no idea. But if you are interested, you can get at that. Uh, there are subtle differences. This one's better, obviously, as LTE, but their speakers are also better placement. We'll talk more about that soon. Looking at the left-hand side here, you can see the slot for the nano SIM card, so that goes in there. You also have a USB Type-C port that is 3.1 for power, as well as a little LED for charging, which is kind of cool. Coming around to the right-hand side, and we get a second USB Type-C port. So again, this is something to do with the Snapdragon 850. They are limited by the amount of ports they can put on the Snapdragon 850. That's something you will see improved if they ever release newer chipsets, I'm just saying. Uh, but you do get two type C, so that's really nice. Same as the other side, no difference. You can charge the device with that one as well. A standard three and a half millimeter headset jack, so they didn't get rid of that, which is good. And your power button, which also lights up. So this glows white when it's powered on and charging, which is nice. And if you hit 20% battery or lower, well, it turns orange, which I think is really clever. I'll be honest, you rarely ever see it. We'll talk about battery life. It's really impressive on this device. All right, taking a look at the display here. Nice thin bezels on the side and the top. Quite a chin though there on the bottom. I would prefer it a little bit more balanced, but you know, it's not so bad. This is a 13.3 inch full HD display. It is touch and pen enabled. Uh, the pen on this is extra, so if you want to get it, it is a Intrigue system, so you can use a Surface pen with it. I will say this is one area of the device where they do cut back on. So compared to say the new Samsung Galaxy Book 2, this display is nowhere near as good. It's not as high resolution and the color contrast, well, it's a little bit on the low side. I find the whites to be a little bit more yellow. This is what you typically see in Lenovo's lower end devices. It's a good screen though. I really don't mind using it, but you can tell it's not the best on the market and this is where they're saving some money. Same thing when it comes to inking, the pen doesn't quite drag as smoothly as a Surface device for instance, but again, gets the job done. Uh, but again, if you want a better inking experience, Surface or Galaxy Book 2 is a better choice. It's worth noting you do have a 720p camera at the top here. It's, well, it's a camera. That's all I can say about it. It's not very good, but it gets the job done if you absolutely need to make a video call. But again, you can tell it's where they made some cuts. All right, turning to the deck though, this is where I really like a lot that's going on here. First of all, I like this placement of the Lenovo logo. I think it's a pretty clever design and it's not as hideous as in the middle as some manufacturers do. So you'll see Lenovo doing that a lot more in their newer devices for 2018. You do get two top firing speakers. That's something you don't really expect on this kind of device, I suppose. So many companies put them on the bottom and the sides and all this kind of stuff, but two top firing speakers, pretty good audio, not the best, but if you look at how thin this device is, it's kind of forgiving. 
Just really nice to have that there though. When you flip it around, it works pretty well. Obviously quad speakers are better for this kind of device, but at this price point, I'm actually really happy to see this. The Chromebook version doesn't have them on top, so much better design here. This is also a really good keyboard. Lenovo's typical smile key design works very well. It is backlit with multi-stage lighting, so you can do that with a function key here. Overall, I really enjoy typing on this. Again, it's a strong point of this device, which is super important for me who I use this for writing a lot of times. I just enjoy using it. Looking at the trackpad, very large size, very smooth glass and precision drivers, no complaints whatsoever, really nice design. Finally, for bio-authentication, you get a fingerprint reader. No Windows Hello IR camera, which I would have preferred, but this is actually a pretty good fingerprint reader. It's read all the time. I don't get misreads on it, and it just works. All right, looking at the bottom here, very clean design. Just have a couple labels. You do have some screws, so yes, you can take off this cover, though you can't do a lot with it, but if you really want to pop off the bottom to see the inside, well, you could do that as well. Okay, let's get into specifications and features here. So we're talking eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, which is kind of interesting because a lot of laptops don't ship with DDR4. This one has it. There's apparently a version of four gigabytes too, but Best Buy is selling this eight gigabyte one, which is probably the one you should get, especially at this price point. Anyway, 128 gigabytes of storage or 256. Again, I haven't seen a 256 out there, but this one here, 128 gigs of storage. It is EUFS, so it is not NVMe SSD. That's coming maybe in a later chip set, uh, but this is pretty good performance here, around 800 megabytes per second for reads and around 200, 250 for writes. So I'm the lower end compared to NVMe storage, but still very good. It's actually faster than some older Surface devices. Now when it comes to that processor, Snapdragon 850, so technically an eight core processor, four big, four little. And if you've seen my previous reviews, I talked about how to benchmark this, it's pretty tricky actually. One way we do it is with Geekbench, which can actually simulate ARM64. And in that regard, it performs very well. So ARM64 here is gonna be everything that the Windows 10 operating system does. So all the inbox apps, the entire operating system, running Office, all that is native to ARM on here, as well as all the apps in the store are actually around 95% of them. So when you take that consideration, if that's what you're running on this device, well, it's going to perform like a Core i3, almost like a Core i5. It's very good performance. It actually slightly beats the Galaxy Book 2, but it's probably more of an anomaly here of performance. But don't forget, the Galaxy Book 2 has a higher screen resolution, so I wouldn't be surprised if that takes some taxing on the processor itself. But it's a very good processor. I really enjoy using this. It's a significant improvement over the Snapdragon 835. I know for some of you, this won't be fast enough, but for me, it actually is. Now, where the caveat comes into is, well, running Win32 apps, that is things you download off the web that are executable. Now, in theory, you wouldn't use the device for this, right? You're going to stick to the store, but if you want to say install Chrome, that's where you would have this problem. So it installs, you could run it, but it's gonna perform more like an Atom processor or a low-end Intel one. So sort of like the Surface Go. And it's not as good an experience, but it does run and it can get you by, but this is one weakness right now of the ARM system. Now I should point out that this is technically a software limitation that's solvable. So for instance, Microsoft has already just released a few weeks ago, a new development kit for devs that allows them to recompile apps to ARM64. And there's already rumors that Microsoft has committed code to the Chromium project for a Chromium browser. And I've heard Firefox may be involved with this too. So you can expect some movement here around ARM-based browsers for this device if you don't like using Edge. But if you're okay with using Edge like I am, well, this is a fantastic experience. Now, the really big selling point here for me has been battery life. So they're promising a little over 20 hours with this. It does pack a 61 watt hour battery. But that perspective, you don't really find 61 watt hour batteries in 13 inch laptops. It's around 10 to 15 watt hours larger than most laptops at this size. And that's because the Qualcomm chipset is so small, they can devote more battery to it. And this thing is absolutely incredible for battery life. So I'm actually getting real world usage around 15 hours. That's actually just using the device. And it's been really phenomenal. It's actually really hard to kill. Having said that, if you do run some apps like Slack and you leave them running in the background, I have noticed some slight battery drain there, so it's not impervious. Again, that's a software issue. But if you're just using this as a laptop, this thing lasts forever. It's absolutely incredible. 
All right, so there's two other selling points besides battery life with this device. One is instant on. So the idea here is when you open the lid, you hit that fingerprint reader, this device just turns on. It never sleeps, never hibernates. It's just like your smartphone, you hit that power button, it comes on. It's a really great experience if you're always turning on and off a device all day. You really appreciate the speed here. The other thing, of course, is gonna be the LTE. So this is a 4G LTE, it uses a Snapdragon X20 modem, which is very good speeds. You can drop in a Verizon SIM, an AT&T SIM, and it just works. It's really nice. I've had no issues with it. Data speeds have been very good. And I use this a lot when I'm traveling, obviously, and that's really the benefit here. I should mention it does have eSIM support. It's actually a second SIM on the device. So you can run a physical SIM as well as an eSIM and dynamically switch between the two. There is an app that lets you go and buy data packages. You can do that on a per day, per month, or even a per six month period. It's not cheap, but it's a nice option, especially if you travel globally, because you can go to a different country and buy a data package, and it'll just turn on. That's a really big benefit here of eSIM, so that's on here, and it works very well. Okay, let's bring it all in. So Windows 10 and ARM is still growing a lot, but we've made so much movement here over the last few months. One areas we need to see improvement upon it is going to be app compatibility with things outside of the store. That should be coming with that new Windows development kit that's out now. If I had to summarize this device, it's strong point, it's definitely gonna be battery life. It's just absolutely incredible. It's also just really good using it as a word processing type laptop. So if you love writing a lot, if you're always responding to emails, browsing the web, using Office, well, this device is gonna be yours. Yes, you can use a pen on it. I would still not draw on it as an artist, but for taking notes, it's actually okay. It's also just got a really decent screen on it. It's not too heavy. It's 2.65 pounds, 1.2 kilograms, so it's still lighter than most laptops out there. But really, the selling point here is that always connected ability, instant on, 4G LTE, as well as really good battery life. Now at $800, it's not particularly cheap, but this is the lowest price we've seen with this feature set for such a device, and I'm actually pretty happy about that. To put that comparison, the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 is $1,000, so $200 more than this. Sure, the display is better, and it's a different form factor, but that's 200 bucks. On the other end, you get the Surface Go with LTE, which is a really fun device as well, but that's $679, plus you need the keyboard, so you're right at about $800 now. That's a very different device. It's 10 inches, it's smaller, but for battery life, it's night and day between these two. So you gotta decide what's more important, the form factor or the battery life. I'm really impressed though with what Novo has pulled off here and I'm really excited about these device categories. It's a super thin, light computing device and I enjoy using it a lot too. If you're a student or you're a worker, well, this is something definitely to consider. If you're a little bit on the edge with Windows 10 and ARM, well, you probably wanna wait a few more months because there's gonna be some more exciting news there. They're not gonna necessarily come down in price, not all of them at least, but I do suspect we'll see some more exciting devices in the future. So there's a quick look at the new Lenovo Yoga C630. Now, if you have more questions about this, make sure you go check out our library. I've done a lot of videos explaining Windows 10 and ARM and how it all works, and I'm sure I'll answer a lot of your questions there. But if I don't, leave a comment below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.